Breaking into the debugger can be achieved with just a single line of Python code. It's import pdb semicolon pdb dot set underscore trace. When execution reaches this point in the program, the program stops and you're dropped into the pdb debugger. Effectively, this is the same as inserting a breakpoint on the line below where we call set trace. That means that execution will stop right before that line of code is executed. If you're using Python 3.7 or later, there's an even easier way. Simply calling the breakpoint function works in the exact same way. That will automatically import PDB and call set trace for you. The advantage to using the breakpoint function instead of the set trace function is that you can modify its behavior by changing your environment variables. This allows you to enable or disable all the breakpoints before your script even runs, instead of having to manually comment all your breakpoint function calls out. Finally, PDB supports what's called post-mortem debugging. This allows you to break into the debugger without modifying the code at all. No breakpoint function, no set trace calls, nothing. This is useful for when you want to debug a program that you don't have write access to. That looks like this, Python 3-m pdb and then the script name. Let's look at an example Python file that uses the set trace function to set a breakpoint. I'm here in Visual Studio Code as usual, and I have opened a very short Python script called example1.py. The first line here is going to set a file name equal to the name of the Python file we're running. Then I call the setTrace function, which will set a breakpoint at line number five. Now I'm going to head over to my Z shell here on the right, and I'll run this Python program how I would normally. Dot slash example one dot pi. And now we've got some output. This looks a little bit cryptic, so let me explain what's going on here. The first line shows an angle bracket followed by the path to the running script, then the line number our breakpoint is on, and then the word module. Basically, this line is giving us the context of where our breakpoint is located. It's in example1.py on line five at the module level. If it were within a function, that function name would be written here instead of module. If you're curious as to why my path starts with slash MNT, that's because I'm using the Windows subsystem for Linux, which actually mounts my computer's Windows partition in the Linux subsystem. Anyways, on the next line, we have an arrow, followed by the line the breakpoint is on. As you can see, the print function hasn't actually been called yet, because execution stops at the breakpoint and won't start executing that line until we tell it to. But instead of doing that, I want to inspect the value of one of my variables. To do that, I'll use the p command, followed by the variable name. When I press enter, you see the file name is printed within the interactive debugger. If you ever want to quit the interactive debugger, just use q and ignore that traceback. If you've been following along, great job. You've seen how we can insert a breakpoint into a program and view information about a variable once the breakpoint is hit. Next, let's dig a little bit deeper and see what else we can do with the p command.